Hello again. In our health and science focus today, we're talking autoimmune diseases and conditions and what you can do if you are living with that, what you can do to live a better, healthier life and be a better version of you. Well, experts say a healthy diet can certainly play an important role in fighting uh, autoimmune diseases and conditions. Let's discuss the importance of a good diet and nutrition when living with autoimmune conditions. Dietitian Mayuri Bowen is somebody who has helped me over the past uh, two years uh, on this very difficult journey. And uh, that is why I asked for you, May to specifically be here because I know that your advice works. Thanks so much for your time. Thanks I know you're very busy as well. Here. Nice to see you again. Well, yes, I'm, I'm, I was a bit nervous because <laughs> I was sure you're going to say, Yveka, what's that I see rolling over the top of your no, pants? But you haven't good. said anything yet, so we're okay. <laughs> so May, um, you are the one who sent me to an endocrinologist yes. when I was battling with my weight and I said to you, you, you were on our show, here on ENCA and I said to you what can you do to help me and you said well have you had this and this and this done what gave you the clue that maybe this was something that had, had to do with an autoimmune condition so a lot of the times you know I get clients having to and specifically in your case you know doing the the medical history doing your diet history and there were obviously things that weren't sitting well in terms of you're not you know you're doing everything according to the accordingly in terms well, I was of working out like yes. a demon and I was eating almost well. starving myself and nothing yes. was moving yes. yes you were eating well you were doing everything you know as possibly as good as you could um, and yeah and I think a lot of the things and and a lot of people out there don't generally do you know a battery of tests and I think it's always a good starting point to sort of see from a hormonal point of view what's yeah. happening and and taking it from there because often we badger ourselves to say you know we're eating well we're exercising we're not seeing results and and sometimes we actually just have to go back to the drawing board and have a look at and uh, you know look at our, our bloods and and take it from there and so you know, often weight yes results. is a problem weight gain uh, or, or maybe extreme weight loss might be a problem that comes with some autoimmune conditions so yes. specifically what do you do to help somebody who is who is living with an autoimmune or has been diagnosed what's the first thing that you do when you sit down with them Okay, so obviously there's various uh, conditions under the autoimmune yeah. disease group. Um, so, and every condition has um, specific nutrient requirements that they would need to um, try to meet. Um, so specifically for a patient who has RA um, or who has celiac disease or Hashimoto's, mm. obviously there will be different prescriptions mm. for that. But it's also just going back to the basics and having to look at what are their daily, uh, what's their daily intake? So in terms of, um, you know, their meals from breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Also, are they meeting requirements in terms of eating fiber, a good high fiber diet? And, and a lot of the time, 60% of our immune cells are located in our gut. Mm. And a lot of people are not necessarily eating a high fiber diet. So that's my first point of call, of having to look at where's their fiber coming in. Um, are they actually eating also enough fruits and vegetables? A lot of people are saying yes, but also portions. You know, a side plate just doesn't cut it. You do really yeah. need to look at, at uh, you know, filling up half of your plate with that. Um, so really doing a detailed diet history with the client and seeing where the shortfalls are and having to say, how do we correct this going forward? Um, obviously, uh, supplements and um, the right medication will obviously help manage the condition yeah. a bit better. Um, but my first point, uh, point of call is obviously looking at the diet history. So obviously different conditions, and there are so many yes. of them, dozens and dozens of them, there yeah. might be specific triggers, there might be certain things that that particular person would have to avoid or yes. include, so that, that, that we, yes. we don't have time to go into all of that. Yes. Common triggers though for autoimmune, what are the common triggers in terms of food? And which I know is, I'm guilty of almost which is, all of them. Which is everyone's favorite, I think, um, is refined carbs and sugars. Um, so it's all your pastries, it's all your, you know, your white breads, your brown breads, your chocolates, your biscuits. So those are the things are, which is going to trigger um, the, the inflammation, which is, which is where you know, I would come in and try to put my patient or my clients on more of an anti-inflammatory diet. Mm. So very much on rich on um, omega-3s, making sure we're eating, again, lots of um, fruits and vegetables. And again, color. A lot of people don't like to add color into their diet and, you know, and also just buying the same types of things. So definitely variety from that point. Um, and also looking a lot of um, high fiber whole grains. So, you know, a lot of the things is that people tend to want to go gluten free, which yeah. does, you know, help a bit. But obviously, you know, if you're looking at a celiac patient, they definitely have to go yeah. gluten free. But a patient who has rheumatoid arthritis, yes, it may help, but it's not necessarily my first point where you have to sort of go strictly on a gluten free diet. Um, there are a lot of things that are naturally gluten free, so specifically um, uh, quinoa, rice, your legumes, your beans, mm. sweet potato, potato, corn. So 
naturally gluten-free products the, or, or food options is obviously something that I would try and add into someone's diet. Um, and then also looking at a good probiotic yeah. um, to try and um, also again make sure that we're getting a good amount of good bacteria. Which we often gut. neglect. We yes. really, really, a lot of people neglect that gut health, like you say, and it is yes. so vital. I mean, yes. they often say our emotions even sit there, our gut yes. and our liver, it's not even up here anymore. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, I remember... And, and you talk about things that we think we have to cut out. And I remember, mm -hmm. you know, not having a lot of fiber. And when you drew up my food yeah. list specifically for me, I looked at like, how was I going to eat all of this? I even yes. phoned you and I said, I can't finish my breakfast. <laughs> Is it okay? And you said, it's fine if you yeah. can't. Yes. So we often have that misconception that, you know, we need to, we need to really, really be that strict and eat yeah. Like and minimal. That, and that's the thing. Oh. So, you know, I think it, it's very much, and I often tell my clients, focus more on progress than perfection. Yeah. You know, this is a lifelong disease. And, and if you can just, you know, do one thing correct for that week, you're already winning. Um, and, and that's the thing is really start looking at diet quality and as opposed to, you know, just on convenience. And, and it really starts changing your mindset on, you know, on, on really quality of food as opposed to, you know, getting things that are processed and, you know, off the shelf. And, 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 and when it comes to autoimmune, am I right in saying that it's going to be an up and down rocky road? I yes. mean, I can be, be a size 34 one week and then the next yes. week I'm a 36 or whatever it is. And it, it, it's frustrating. Yes. It really is frustrating. But yeah. should we prepare ourselves to say, look, it's not going to be, you're not going to stay the same throughout this, this journey or the next five years. So there's whatever. obviously different factors that may affect, um, mm. especially from a weight point of view, in terms of the medication, in terms of activity level. You might experience you know, a few weeks where you are in pain, which means that you won't be able to do some certain exercises, which means energy expenditure is low. You, again, start emotional eating because uh, we're feeling sorry for ourselves. Um, yeah, like the stress and depression that, that yes, we just and then we start about, yeah. sort of eating foods that are comforting, which is sugars and fat. Um, so you will have your days where you're up and down but I think it's really just again taking a step back and I urge people to start taking or, or keeping a food diary a food diary really uh, you know just uh, emphasizes the the good and the bad in terms of how you're doing in a yeah. week and and really just working from there and making those changes as opposed to changing your whole diet um, and really just making the small changes and it's it's okay if on a weekend you decide you're gonna have that piece of cake. I mean, yes. I'm not telling you, I'm asking you. Yeah. I want you to tell me it's okay. Okay. So you it's can. okay. You can. If, so if, if you're suffering or, or you're yes. living with an autoimmune condition, it doesn't mean you sort of live as if you're dead now. No. no. So I always go back on the 80% 80 80-20 uh, 80, 80, yeah. rule where 80% of our time we should be eating healthily and 20% of the time we'll eat a little bit naughty and that's fine. And we shouldn't have that guilt feeling yeah. um, of having to have that slice of cake because again, it's always in context of where we are and who we're with. Um, so really, by all means, have that slice of cake. Um, and just another point that I wanted to mention is vitamin D is a big thing as yes. well. And I think it's very important that who, someone who is um, diagnosed with some sort of autoimmune disease needs to have their vitamin D checked um, and also making sure their vitamin B levels are also um, within, within the criteria mm. as well. And also if they might maybe take a supplement, that's also even better. But are you seeing more and more people who come to you with weight issues that they are now being diagnosed with, with autoimmune? What's the clue for you? Um, actually, I have been seeing in the last, probably in the last month or so, a lot of clients that are either a lot more underactive uh, thyroid, yeah. so Hashimoto's. So a lot more. And I think it's, again, stress. And there's a lot of factors that probably will still affect it. Um, but again, it goes back to just, you know, we really need to look at our, at our nutrition and getting that balance. And I know it's easier said than done. Yeah. Um, but again, I urge people to really take sort of analyze a diet and sort of see what is something that we can change in this week. So if it means that you're not necessarily eating enough high fiber sort of cereals, or you're not eating a carb at lunch because you're worried about gaining weight, like don't be and this is why we are here so really you know reach out to a nutritionist or to a dietitian um, mm. and they'll be able to you know guide you in terms of portions mm. and also the right types of carbs because yeah. you know gluten-free also just doesn't mean and I'm going touching back on that because you know people buy a lot of processed gluten-free products but that's where you're not getting enough fiber and there's a lot of foods out there that are whole foods yeah. which we can include in our diet already
Fantastic. Mary Bowen, thank you so much. You'll be getting lots of WhatsApps from me now. That it'll start again, me inundating you with, with, with queries. Please, please <laughs> I know you have some free time now. Thanks very much. Well, that's our discussion for this week, autoimmune diseases and conditions. I hope that we've really helped you. If you are battling with it, that you are not alone. You don't feel alone. I'm one. I'm a sufferer. And life does go on. You just have to make those little tweaks. Uh, goodbye for this week. Take care.